Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web, and today we're gonna uncrate the Shoe Birth E2. What's up, Speed Addicts fan? Before we jump in and give you the lowdown on the latest lid out of Deutschland, do us both a favor, subscribe to the Speed Addicts channel, that way you don't miss out on any of the latest new gear reviews coming your way, Speed Addicts, always getting first look, just like we are here on this shoe berth, which is recent, re recently released. Subscribe and don't miss out. Also, if you'd like to purchase the helmet we're gonna speak about in this video today, we'd appreciate it if you support Speed Addicts. We make it real easy. There's a link to shop for the shoe berth E2 at speedaddicts.com in the section below there. Also, while you're over at Speed Addicts, go ahead and shop for any other parts or gear you might need for your next two wheel adventure. Schuberth, German engineering, very high level of quality standards and thought goes into every Schuberth helmet, tons of R&D. The E2 is their new adventure helmet. So basically, if I had to boil this down for you, what they've done is they've taken their very successful C5 modular helmet and added a peak to it. If you're not familiar with Schuberth, we're not familiar with the C5, well stay tuned, we're gonna give you the full breakdown, but much of what has gone into this helmet and what it is actually is uh, basically identical to the C5. There's some styling cues as well, they're a little bit different, we'll show you more on that in a second. So what you're gonna pay is $7.99 for the solids, up to $8.99 for the graphics. Now, that's only about $30 more, depending on which one you're looking at, than that C5. And so my advice to you, if you're interested in a shoe berth helmet, one of the modular ones, of course, with the lift up chin bar, probably just buy the E2, spend the extra $30, get the peak because you can just remove this. In the box, you get a couple of little plugs here to cover up these uh, holes, which I'll show you in a minute. And now you have a C5. So you get the best of both worlds for an extra $30. It seems like a no brainer to me. Shell construction. This is a fiberglass shell with reinforced carbon fiber sections. Weight three pounds, 13 ounces. Relatively lightweight for a modular helmet. I must say when I go to pick this up, this is a size large. It feels a little bit lighter than that. Uh, and you still have that peak on it. They're only using two shell sizes, intermediate oval fit. When it comes to the fit, Schubert typically runs true. And the awesome thing about the C5 and this E2, highly customizable interior. They sell different thicknesses of all the different pad sets in here. When we pull this apart, we'll show you in a minute. But I, I, I was always a little worried about only having two shell sizes in the C5 and the E2, but we really haven't had any problems with fit because it is so customizable. If you have any room to make up, any hot spots, you can usually get it done with one of these shoe berth padding sets, which I think is quite nice. Now, like I said, extra small all the way up to three extra large, so they're not leaving those large heads out. When you're trying to figure out your fitment, go buy the shoe berth sizing chart at speedaddicts.com. You should be in great shape, but in case you don't get it right the first time, we've got no cost returns over here at Speed Addicts. That's right, we don't nickel and dime you like those other guys. You're gonna get a free return label in a few clicks. You can send it back, get a refund, get an exchange, whatever you need to do. We're gonna treat you like family. All you have to do to qualify is live in the lower 48 states. Make sure the gear's brand new and original condition. You will qualify for no cost returns. Okay, back to the helmet and enough with my shameless plugs. Here we go, the E2. Let's talk about the safety real quick. This helmet's gonna come carrying only a DOT homologation. Now, when I talked to Shoeberth about this, why don't you guys have that ECE 2206 label like the E2 sold in Europe are carrying? The reason is twofold. Number one, they had to make some slight changes to the shell construction and to pass the DOT uh, penetration test of the shell. So it's got a layer of basalt in it to improve the penetration protection. They've also tuned the EPS to account for that slightly uh, thicker, sticker, a stiffer shell and uh, to, to back off the density there. So those two are kind of working in combination to still probably pass that EC2206 test, but now there's economics involved because you technically have a different helmet, the DOT label helmet coming to the United States. It's gonna cost more to run it through that ECE process and carry that homologation label. And this helmet is already at the top of the pricing structure, right? When we're talking about ultra premium helmets. So even if it only costs another $25 a helmet at re for Shoeberth at retail, it's another hundred bucks. 
So there's some economics at play, probably why it's not carrying that ECE2206 label in case you were wondering, which I know you are when you're spending this kind of money. Now, the things that haven't changed, of course, you still get all the other great stuff that EC is requiring, like this extra large eye port and all the other kind of gadget chin strap requirements built into this. Now, a little warning about uh, importing helmets from other countries into the United States. Shoebirth wanted me to pass this along to you. If you import a helmet into the United States that's not a DOT helmet, it will not be valid for warranty. That's a bummer when you have such an investment in a high-end helmet like this, so they do discourage that. And we've also been told the Department of Transportation is intercepting some of those helmets starting in 2023, uh, and so you might not even get it. It might get returned to sender. Just a few tips for you. So buy in the US. If you're gonna be wearing the helmet in the US, you reside in the US. That is my disclaimer. Let's talk about what makes Schubert special and the number one reason folks buy Schubert helmets beyond the awesome engineering and just their performance is really how quiet they are. So they make a claim of 85 dB on the C5. The E2, there's just no way it's gonna be quite as quiet because you are running the peak, but if you remove that, you're gonna get back to that 85 decibels claim. So extremely quiet helmet. We're gonna show you more on why that is, but one of their secrets is their neck roll. We'll show you more on that in a minute. So if you're looking for something quiet and high-end adventure, think E2. So let's look at this peak first. So this is this is gonna be the main difference between that C5 and the the uh, E2 here. The, the peak is three position. So to move the peak, you're going to release the locks on both sides. It's gonna allow you to change it into all the way up, part way down, all the way down. So you pick what's right for you right in the middle seems to hit me just right in terms of blocking the sun. You notice that it's got these massive ducts on it. It's gonna allow it to uh, cut through the air without pulling on your head at speed. But hey, if you're gonna throw down a big day of only asphalt mileage, and you're gonna be running you know, 80 miles an hour or something like that, perhaps you wanna pull that off. If you're not riding to the sun, it's very easy to take off. So how you do that, you're just gonna slide these locks off and gently remove it. See how easy that was? Were there pieces that popped out of here and flew all over the place to lose and washers and a bunch of BS? No, there wasn't because it was engineered in Germany. It's very smart. See all that, see all those gears and cams? Smart people figured this out, so it wasn't a mess. Now, <clears throat> like I said, in the box, you're gonna get covers. I don't have them here, uh, but the covers just click right into there and now you have a C5. Now, in terms of the difference of the styling, slightly different ventilation, um, fins on it. So this one's a little bit more aggressive looking, but again, they start life pretty much the same thing. There's your ventilation duct. Okay. So before I put the peak back on, I will show you this is their main intake point. It's got these little ruffles up here, easy to grab with your gloves on. One big slider, which is what I prefer. It is three position, so you can dial it in. Behind here in the EPS, two enormous ducts that go right into your noggin to keep you cool. They can be closed off from the inside and the outside in cold weather. So if you're running cold weather, the E2 is a great choice. You can really lock this helmet down when it comes to the ventilation. Down in front, you have your typical chin bar vent, two big flared nostrils right there, and then you get a, a blower that's gonna kick the air onto the face shield and help with your fog situation. So let's put the, uh, I'm gonna show you how easy this is to put on. So you're gonna find that same spot where you took it off, and then you're just gonna turn these it's done. Very, very nice. I love that. Okay, let's check out this face shield. Extremely large eye port here, and you get the interior sun shield that is baked in. Smooth action, actuated over here on the left side. Very straightforward. The face shield that's going to come on it is clear, and it actually has that pin lock insert already installed for you. Not only do they uh, include it it's installed. This is not like a, a, a take home model kit where you gotta put it all together. The same is true for the built in communication, which is very slick. So you notice this port, flush mount communication by uh, Senna actually. It's called the Schubert SC2, but it is built by Senna. It's a 50 series equivalent and it is plug and play. So you're gonna plug that in. The speakers are already in place. And all you gotta do is plug in the brain and plug in your boom mic, which I'm gonna show you right here. The boom mic plugs in right here. They got a little rubber plug to uh, get that out of your way. And uh, you are ready to ride. Now, can you install another comm system 
into this helmet? Well, yes, you could. You probably want to go with some sort of adhesive mount, uh, or maybe you can get a, a, a clamp style. But the SC2 is very nice because it is completely integrated solution there. As we move around the back, you notice another door here for that comm system, and uh, you are dialed in. The chin bar, face shield. This is a very smart system in that it remembers where you put your face shield. So if you're gonna go up for a little bit, maybe you're going through town, you're getting gas, you wanna pull the chin bar up. There's a release right there. You're just gonna depress that and lift it up. When you're ready to put the chin bar down, you're just going to gently grab this chin bar and pull it down and you notice that your visor stays right where you put it. Good boy, shoe berth, good boy. Now, what you don't wanna do is go up here and grab all of it at the same time. If you grab your face shield and the chin bar and pull it all down and you smush this down right now, you're basically overriding that memory system for your face shield and over time that will grind the gears and be bad for the helmet. So don't do that. Move the face shield after the fact if you had it in the upward uh, or the all the way up position. Now if it's all the way down and then we pull all the way down, see how it comes with it? Pretty neat. It is a smart helmet. Okay, that about does it for the exterior. Let's roll this over and show you the secret sauce from Shoe Birth here, and that is their neck roll. So, very robust neck roll to isolate your ear holes from all those sounds you don't want coming up from the motorcycle. You notice how this is completely separate from that interior piece, and it's gonna make a really positive seal underneath, uh, underneath your jaw. So let's pull this up. You also got a chin curtain, which is pretty minimal here. But let's get this out of the way. They're going with the quick release chin strap, just like the C5. We're gonna open this up. And what I hear is this sort of Velcro option is going to get rolled out again soon. This is not uh, off <clears throat> out of our, our inventory at the moment. This was a sample from Shoebirth with this Velcro, but this is gonna be coming back soon to the United States. Uh, and uh, that helps keep that closed and helps keep sound out, right? That's kind of a nice thing. Okay, so let's pull this thing apart and we're gonna show you the interior here. Cheek pads and all the pieces of the Comfort Liner are all completely customizable, like I said before. And one cool thing that the shoe berth has, it's not your ch traditional chin strap here. You notice that they have kind of this, the chin strap location that you're used to. And then behind the cheek pad, they have an anti roll off strap that runs towards the back of the helmet to keep the helmet on your head. Should you be involved in an accident, something that no one else does. There is your cheek pad again. There's not a ton of foam to this. And this is a size large, which is kind of nice because it's not gonna break in a ton and get sloppy over time. And it gives you lots of room to adjust uh, up should you need to. Let's get the other one out of the way. Okay, <clears throat> there's your other cheek pad. Really nice kind of micro suede there. And now the rest of the liner starts to come out. So this is the back of the head pad. You notice 10 millimeters. You can buy different thicknesses. They're all different pieces. Mix and match them, customize them. As we look up in the front, let's see if I can get you in there. You see those two giant holes that's gonna hit you right in the forehead and keep you cool. Uh, that is part of the ventilation system. And one of the cool things about this liner, again, the Mohawk piece, you have all your size options here. And if you wanna block that ventilation off, you close the vents down the front and then you flip this, it's gonna block those holes there and keep you even warmer in cold weather. Let's get the rest of this liner system out. There she is. Those are your side pieces. So if you have a shape problem, you know, you have a, a long oval head, you can make up some of that space by going thicker than 10 millimeters on these side pieces. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the front piece. There you go. You, not, you notice I'm not fighting with this too much. All the snaps and kind of clips are where they should be and easily come in and out. There's the piece on the forehead. All right, there you go. That is the interior of the E2 helmet. You notice the ducts and ports and channels. Whoops, going the wrong way. We have the EPS, multi-density EPS liner. That about does it. High-end adventure 
Uh, and like I said, sport touring, if you're looking for just a modular helmet, I recommend going with the E2 instead of the C5. Get that peak for an extra $30, you can't beat it. Five year warranty, German engineering. You're getting the drop down sun visor, you're getting the pin lock insert, you're getting the peak, it's comm system ready. It's really, if you got the scratch, it's hard to beat this shoe berth. It's gonna be in our best of adventure helmets again this year. Check us out on YouTube, Speed Ag's channel. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.